Lovely people, welcome or welcome back to another Story Study Saturday. I'm Sammy and I'm a writer who likes to learn about writing through reading and share what I learn with you. This week we are talking about lore. What's that? Another physical book. This one is not a giveaway, which is crazy. It is, however, my partner's book. I discovered it on social media, I think last year when it came out, and I was like, hey, they say this book is good for people who like the Percy Jackson series. You like the Percy Jackson series, so he got it. He got the white version and started reading it. I think he said he got like 30 pages in, and he dropped a hot dog on it. <laughs> So there's hot dog juice on the cover, which is kind of hilarious. And he got so upset about dropping a hot dog on it that he stopped reading it. So I was like, hey, can I read that book? I was waiting for you to read it, but can I read it before you? He was like, yeah, I dropped a hot dog on it. So please do. Hot dog juice aside, if you would like a summary of lore by Alexandra Rackham, here's one that I came up with. In a world where the Greek gods are punished by Zeus to become mortal for seven days every seven years and be hunted by the descendants of ancient heroes. Lore was just a girl when the last hunt murdered her whole family. She has pulled herself out of the world that destroyed her family only to be dragged back in when she discovers her childhood friend she thought had died needs her help. That and the goddess Athena arriving at her doorstep bleeding. Will she be able to escape the endless cycle of the hunt? and get revenge on the person who murdered her entire family by the end of the seventh day. So let's get into my thoughts on this. There is something so beautiful about a lot of the factors that went into creating this story. The world, the history, the politics, the way that it kind of feels like they all have magic even when most of them do not have any magic. It's all through just training and like a history of doing this constantly. It's all so very well thought out that everything feels real. And it's one of those stories where it's real life adjacent. So the real world that the reader knows and engages with is directly related to how things are working in the story. So you can have that easier foot in the door for the world building that there's not all of it that's different. I also think that Lore's internal conflict was done really, really well. It ebbed and flowed and changed and developed and undeveloped and <laughs> altered based on everything that was going on and the information that she had. Understanding her internal conflict, this emotional journey that she's on, was just done really well. And it's really engaging and entertaining to witness and root for her through it as even her own perceptions of what her wants and needs are is changing the whole time. There was, I'm gonna be vague here, a twist that I did not see coming. And as soon as it was like presented to me, I was like, I definitely should have seen that coming in a way that it was beautiful and really, really well attuned to Greek mythology. I'm not a big Greek mythology person, so I didn't see it coming, but I can see that if somebody were really, really invested in Greek mythology, they would have seen it coming because it makes a whole lot of sense when you know the characters based on who they are historically. And the way that it was resolved was absolutely top tier. It was fantastic. And that's all I'll say about it because I don't, we're done. That's a huge spoiler, but it was like amazingly done. The side characters, the ensemble of characters around lore that are human, Pastor, Van, and Miles are all really interesting and unique individuals. And we get this added benefit of Miles just being a regular human guy who lives in New York. And he ends up being being the through character for the reader to understand what's going on in a way that's done really well because I don't enjoy stories where the protagonist is the one that's being introduced to the world the way that the reader is being introduced to the world. Think like Harry Potter. Harry Potter didn't know anything about the wizarding world. I don't really, I could care more about his story but I don't and that's kind of my issue with a protagonist not knowing what's going on in the world. I have no reason to believe in them other than the fact like we have the power of friendship and I'm the chosen one and those things just don't do it for me. So the fact that our protagonist, Lore, was in this world, knows everything about this world and chose to step away from this world and found herself a normal life that I can relate to, not 
being in this like hunt of the gods personally. When the conflict is reintroduced into her life of this hunt, she then has to explain it to Miles. And Miles is a stand-in for me because I don't know what the heck is going on. And it's really well done for having the opportunity to explain certain things and not needing to explain everything to your protagonist. I think that was a really great choice. And having Miles there, for one, he is great. He is so, he is such a great character. I adored him and he didn't know what was going on, but he asked the right questions. The same questions that I had as a normie to the situation, somebody who's an unblooded, someone who's not in the world of the hunt. So what do I think could be improved about this story? I genuinely do not have very much. In fact, I have one thing. I really liked this book. This was an easy five-star read. There was nothing that I was against except for the fact that sometimes I was really invested in a certain topic and I'm going to be vague because I don't want to give any spoilers but sometimes there would be something going on that I really cared about as the reader but Lore, our viewpoint character, did not think that that was a priority, where I wanted the answers to that situation immediately and did not get them because she did not think it the most important thing. So you go like two or three chapters and then you get the answer to the thing that I wanted three chapters ago, which I guess has to happen. <laughs> I understand that it has to happen. If you're doing a point of view character, you can't answer all of the questions except for the ones that your character is actually asking, but I wanted the answers, which is, I don't know that that could be improved besides putting it into a like more of an omniscient perspective, but I think that would have taken a lot away from the story if you took it away from a close third person with lore. So what can writers learn from this story? I think the main thing that I took away from this is that Greek mythology has such a large amount of room to play with it. There are so many different ways you can take Greek mythology and make it into your own story. There are so many ways that it has been done that there are so many more ways that it hasn't been done because anything you can think of you can basically put those characters into and see what happens and in a way you kind of get your own type of fan base out of it because there are people who are like yeah I'll read any Hades and Persephone retelling I'll read anything that has the Greek gods in it I'll read anything that's a retelling of Greek mythology whether I, I, I like it is a question or not there's like a lot you can do with it and a lot of creative space that you can have and you don't have to do everything yourself you you know who Athena is. Athena is a character that you know who she is. You know what she's like. You have all kinds of examples of what type of character she is, how she'd behave in certain situations. So if you need Athena to be in your story, you can put her in your story and you just sort of have to think about how she'd react to the situations you're putting her in rather than everything about her. So in a way, Greek mythology retellings are all sort of fan fiction, <laughs> which is a funny way to think about it. But you get the added benefit of playing with characters that have already been developed and putting them into situations that you've come up with yourself the way that fanfiction writing is. But there, there's a lot that you can do with it and I think that's really beautiful. This story is a really good example of a character that has lied to themselves so fully for so long that they fully believe the lie that they have told themselves and the people around them. You don't see that super often and the way that it's done is really interesting to me personally because it's a psychological thing that doesn't happen super often in real life. It doesn't happen super often for many things but it is a trauma response for some people to just completely disregard things that have happened to them and tell themselves a new narrative of what could have happened so that they don't have to deal with the trauma of those situations. So I think this is a good example of using that in a character to create conflict. And going along with that, this is also a good example of using what could be PTSD or like survivor's guilt in motivating your character and navigating how your character makes decisions and what they value about 
certain things going on in their lives. This book also does a really good job of using the reader's empathy against them in a good storytelling kind of way, not like an insulting way, where the empathy that your reader has for the characters puts them into a position where you can enthusiastically pull the rug out from under them. I'm referencing the twist that I was talking about in my thoughts section. A lot of empathy led me to getting to a point where I just didn't believe that that would happen. And then they took it and it was done really well. It was a really great thing. It made a lot of sense for the character. And I think this is a really good example of using readers empathy against them in a entertaining way. I also think this is a really good example of magical realism without so much magic. Just like the world being parallel to the real world that your reader lives in. And having that adjacent storytelling. I think this does a really good job of that. I also think Legendborn does a pretty good job of that. And that one does actually have magic. But that is all that I've got for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It'll really help me out. If you've read lore, do me a favor and leave a hot dog emoji in the comments because I think that would be hilarious. If you haven't read lore, what's your favorite Greek mythology retelling? Because there are so many out there and it's crazy how many there are and kind of beautiful how many there are. It's a such a unique little take on the world. It's a historical thing. People really believed in these gods and they are still technically with us. But I will see you guys on Tuesday for some writing stuff based around the end of the year and new beginnings. And I will be back again on Saturday for another story study. So I will see you guys on Tuesday.